He was so much devoted to art that being already a famous artist, he could draw until losing consciousness. The so-called inspiration is, in essence, an award for hard work, Russian painter Ilya Yefimovich Repin liked to repeat. He was born in 1844 in the small Ukrainian town of Chugye in the poor family of a military settler. The boy studied at local school of military topographers. There, at the age of seven, he took brushes in his hands for the first time and began to paint with such persistence that his nose started to bleed. Neighbors predicted death to the weak child, but he recovered and started painting again. When he was 12, Ilya asked his father to send him to icon painter Bunakov for apprenticeship. Repin mastered quickly the difficult craft. He was more and more often asked to paint a church or to draw a portrait. Dreaming of further studying, Ilya saved up 100 rubles by the age of 19 and went to Petersburg. Under the recommendation of Ivan Kramskoy, an artist and a teacher of the drawing school, the talented young man was taken in to the Academy of Arts, which he finished with the big golden medal. Glory came to Repin when he was not yet 30. At the World's Fair in Vienna, his picture Barge Haulers on the Volga was exhibited. The artist worked on this canvas for about five years, making numerous sketches during his walks along the Neva embankment and his travel on the Volga. I must confess frankly that I was not at all interested in the problem of barge haulers' agreements with their owners, recollected Repin. I was more excited about how a barge hauler's head is marvelously tied round by a rag, how his hair curls on his neck, and the main thing, the color of his face. The picture Barge Haulers on the Volga brought European fame to the artist. Having received the right for a trip abroad at the expense of the Academy of Arts, Repin, with his family, went to Paris for three years. Unfortunately, his young spouse, Vera Shevtsova, was not much educated, and the role of the mistress of intellectual salon, which the painter's house turned into, appeared too difficult for her. Mutual misunderstanding, infinite quarrels with breaking plates and dishes, and also Ilya Yefimovich's stormy love affairs led to breakup. In 15 years of family life, the Repins parted, Two elder daughters remained with their father, the youngest daughter and the son with their mother, as they could not bear Ilya Yefimovich's strangeness any longer. One of his freaks was the mania to sleep in the fresh air. Once Repin heard that cold was good for the health, and since then he forced all his family to spend nights on an open balcony, even in severe cold in winter. In 1885, the artist finished one of his most famous historical pictures, Ivan the Terrible and his son Ivan on November 16, 1581. Repin depicted a real event. The Tsar kills his son. Many people found the picture seditious, and collector Pavel Tretyakov, who bought the canvas, had to keep the picture in a closed storage by the emperor's order. Only in 1913, Repin's masterpiece became widely available. Working on the canvas Saporosian Cossacks, writing a letter to the Turkish Sultan, Ilya Repin made hundreds of sketches over 12 years and painted the picture anew several times. The artist studied clothes and household goods of Cossacks in detail under the direction of historian Dmitry Yavornitsky, who in addition willingly posed for Repin for the clerk's figure. Emperor Alexander III bought the picture, Zaporozhian Cossacks, writing a letter to the Turkish Sultan for a very high price in those times, 35,000 rubles. Repin is also known as a remarkable portrait painter. Among those who posed for the artist were his relatives, peasants from Chukiv, writer Leo Tolstoy, actress Strepetova, composer Mosorsky. At the age of 56, Ilya Yafimovich met the woman who became his close friend and the second wife. Natalia Borisovna Nordman Severova helped him work on pictures and he painted her portraits. Korny Chukovsky recollected that Repin doted upon her. In Kukale, two hours away from Petersburg, she bought the manor Pinatis. Here, the artist worked, 
and on Wednesdays he received visitors. Everything that occurred during these receptions was discussed with enthusiasm on newspaper pages. Ardent vegetarian Natalia Borisovna fed her guests with soup and cutlets of hay. Repin himself had many odd habits too. Being a well-to-do artist, he did not let himself drink expensive Chinese tea on usual days, leaving it for solemn occasions. From Penates to Petersburg, he went very early for the morning tram ticket. By going early, it cost him two times cheaper. But for all that, Repin sometimes endowed his poor friends with big sums of money. After 1917, Kukale, where the Repin's manor was situated, passed to Finland and the artist appeared to be an immigrant against his will. The fear of communists did not let him return to Russia. In the Penates, he died on September 29, 1930. Being a convinced realist, Ilya Repin admitted, I do not care of paints, strokes, and virtuosity of brush. I have always followed the essence, a body as a body. Leo Tolstoy said about his pictures, the skill is so great that one cannot see it. <laughs>